Welcome to the Zimmerman Podcast with your host, CEO, wedding professional, educator, and mom, Jessica Zimmerman. This is a brand new Zimmerman Podcast mini-series, Sleeping with a Stranger Under the Cover. In the next few weeks leading up to the release of my memoir, Sleeping with a Stranger, we'll be taking a look under the cover as I share insider information about the story and process behind my memoir, Sleeping with a Stranger, which releases May 7, 2020. I'm sitting down with Rachel, who will be interviewing me about the deeply personal and never before shared details of my journey through living and writing Sleeping with a Stranger. So let's do this. Let's go under the cover. Well, I'm excited to be back, Jess, and to get to talk to you more about the book. We're going under the cover, talking about sleeping with a stranger. Love it. Okay, today I want to talk about, uh, we kind of got into this a little bit last time we talked. You were telling me about your therapist. You talk about your therapist a decent amount in the book, and I don't know why, but there is still, it, with some people in some places, kind of you know, misconceptions or just a weird stigma about therapy, right? I love therapy so much. I, think I love therapy so much. It's You're educating yourself about yourself. Like, <laughs> don't you want to know how you, how you, everything that you can about yourself? I find it fascinating. Oh yeah. I mean, there's a scene in the book and I won't get into too much detail, but there's a scene where you are f- falling apart physically, mentally, and you don't know it until something happens and you realize that you are not doing as well as maybe you thought you were. And you kind of say, someone gives you kind of an ultimatum and you say, you mean that I could go to therapy and it's like medically necessary And then the person talking to you says, yes, and your insurance will cover it, which thankfully yours did. That's not true for everyone. But yeah, for you, it was such a gift to be told you get to go learn about yourself and process everything that's happened. And uh, I am a medical professional telling you, you need to do it. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk today a little bit about how um, therapy is a part of just your kind of non-negotiables, your routine, um, how it's allowed you to do what you do as a mom, as a wife, as a business owner, as a person, and um, just kind of the role that it's played in your story as it's going to be told in the book. So we don't need to get into what happens in the book with therapy, but I just want to know about your relationship with therapy. I know a lot of what we talked about so far has been kind of the nuts and bolts about the book process, but honestly, I feel like therapy has been such an essential portion of the book process for you that we would be remiss to not talk about it. Yeah. I think for for me, it's interesting. I got a message the other day from somebody on Instagram who said, thank you for talking about therapy like it's going to the grocery store. (laughs) Like it's just such an everyday, like necessary, every week necessity. And I said, yeah, that's what it is for me. I mean, it's, it's just as crucial as the grocery store. And yeah, I think that therapy plays a big part in the book because so much of the book, and I'm not going to go into all the details, but it's about figuring out for myself what, I have to do to be my best self. And therapy, it was and still is a huge part of that. And I've always been fascinated by therapy, always. And I think in some way, it's interesting because on Tuesday, I was talking to Lynn and who's my therapist. And he said, I started, I'll just start talking and then bless his soul for just listening. And then I sometimes will try to answer my own questions and he has said to me a couple different times, he's like, you know, if this book thing didn't work out, you could be a therapist. Like, you could be a therapist. <laughs> I'm like, that's funny. But I have always found it fascinating and tried to, I think even from a young age, tried to think about, well, there's a reason that person acts that way, or there's a reason, mm-hmm. you know, like there's something more to it. And so I actually think it's really fascinating to figure that out about yourself. And there's been a couple of things that uh, I had a therapist say to me, freshman year of college, that really made me understand so much of my childhood. And then there are a couple of things that Lynn has said to me that have made 
so much sense that are just, it's almost freeing. It's just, it, it's like putting down, you know, bags and bags and bags of baggage. It's like, oh, I get it now. Okay, thank you. It's like a validation of that makes total sense now, why I am this way or why I do that one thing or why, like it just, and I think it takes a lot of the the shame off, actually. That's what therapy does for me is it removes a lot of, not that I necessarily deal with shame necessarily, but just, it, it, again, it, it's just validating. Like, oh, that is, that is completely understandable why I would act that way or why I would do that or, yeah. I think it's so valuable in therapy that it's not like you're giving yourself excuses for bad behavior, but you look at your life and then it's a third party, an objective party who gives you reasons for why things were the way they were. Not excuses, just reasons. And then it helps you feel less, um, no less responsible, but just like you said, oh, that makes sense. Like, Mm -hmm. of course, given this, I would respond this way. I can choose now to change that because I have that awareness. But I think sometimes people think, oh, well, that happened such a long time ago. I'm fine now. I don't need to talk about that in therapy. Like that happened in childhood or whatever. Um, Or I think for me, I... I've been in therapy a couple different times um, for different reasons, but there were things when I went to therapy the first time, like my parents got divorced when I was very young. And I think I rationalized to myself, well, everyone's parents gets divor- like get divorced. You don't get to be upset about that. That's just something that happens. <laughs> and, and just because it happens frequently doesn't mean that there wasn't stuff to unpack from that for me personally. And even though it happened when I was very young, it was still affecting who I was as a at that time, a 19, 20 year old. So I and I know that um after Courtney died, you you didn't go to therapy when you were young when she died, you were three and you didn't. Now I think there's, it's more common to send young kids to like play therapy and different things when traumatic events occurred, but that wasn't something that was made available to you. And so I'm sure there were, was a lot of that, that through this process, when you're re-remembering all these things that came up in therapy. Mm -hmm, Definitely. Yeah. And, and, you know, even my kids, They've been a couple times with me and I just say, this is Lynn and this is called therapy and this is just a safe place where we share our feelings and they get it. And it's just, I I like that I take them every now and then just so they, they don't ever think that it's weird or uncomfortable or anything, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I think it's crucial. I think it's just as important as, you know, getting physical exercise. I've been showing up publicly, teaching all my business secrets for years, all while leaving my biggest story untold, the story of how my family and I survived the illness that almost killed my husband, Brian. May 7th, 2020, I'm finally sharing our story with the world. If you want to be one of the first to read this never before told story, sign up for book updates at sleepingwithastranger.com. That's sleepingwithastranger.com. I went to a therapy session with you once and I think you were joking around like, when are you ever going to kick me Me? out or tell me I can't come back? Yeah, I went with you. (laughs) Me joking? What? Oh, I know. <laughs> in therapy, how? But you were like, "Are you gonna? Are you not gonna let me come back anymore? Are you gonna? Are you done with me?" And I, I love what one of your followers said about it being kind of like a trip to the grocery store for you because there is no point where you're like, "I'm all better now. I'm not going back. Like I'm done. I'm fixed." Because it's not about being fixed, and there's always more to process. And sort of like we talked about in last week's episode, there have been parts in the book where you write them, and then a couple weeks pass, and we're going through some edits, and you've gone to therapy a couple times, and you've realized in that interim that the way you relate to that passage that you wrote has changed. 
and you think, oh, that's not actually what I meant, or I don't think that's what I really felt. And neither of them were untrue. It just takes on a new meaning as you process it more. And so different events, you realize you have a different relationship to them. And that keeps unfolding. Like, I don't think there's any a point in time, not that everyone has to go to therapy every week for their whole lives, but there's never a point in time where it's like, you're cured, no more therapy. Right. No, not at all. Absolutely. You're not like, I don't ever want to not go. <laughs> right. And there's been a point in your life where things have been more contentious or you had, um, it was just a time, even just this time last year where things were very tense and a lot of uncertainty about major, major life re- relationships and events. Um, and you're not in that same space now, but that doesn't mean that you don't still need therapy. Oh gosh, I'm going to need therapy for the rest of my life. For me, what it is, is it's not that there's, you know, necessarily something like wrong that I'm trying to work out every week. It's just honestly being able to go to someone and verbally process just like what happened in the last week. And sometimes there's things to unpack. And sometimes it's just a conversation. But it's actually really nice to have that conversation. Like sometimes it's just business stuff. And I realized that as an entrepreneur, as the business owner, as the leader, I need to process that. I need to verbally process it. And I, you know, don't need to always do that with my team. I sometimes just need to go and be like, listen, I don't know what I'm doing with this, you know, and that's not always something that you want to say to your team. Um, Or it's not always something that, you know, uh, Brian is such an amazing listener. He also wants to fix it, you know, and sometimes I don't need it fixed. I just need and and he's good when I tell him that, like, he'll start going, okay, well, what about and I'm like, I don't need you to fix it. I just need you to listen. He's like, okay, I'm listening. Here I am. Just listen, you know. And um, but Lynn has a way of somehow asking questions that make me think about things differently than I than I normally would. And it can be, like I said, just the most simple week that I'm kind of recapping for him. And it's like, oh, huh. I didn't really think of it that way. But yeah, I bet that okay. And it's just for me, it's really helpful and it helps to not have all this stuff kind of bottled up inside of me. Not that it's even, I'm not even saying it's bad stuff, but just the thoughts and the, and the responsibilities of a business owner and a mom and all of the things. And it is nice to verbally let it out. And then, you know, it could be as simple as just being like, oh my gosh, we had like a lot of, a lot of Christmas parties that we were going to, like who knew? when you had, you know, two toddlers and a first grader that you were going to be invited to 97 Christmas parties. And I just don't, you know, I'm over it. You know, it could be just something as simple as as that. For me, I don't realize how much that stuff adds up as stress because my body doesn't process stress normally. It doesn't give me like a signal that says, ding, 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 you're stressed. And so I think for me, it's really necessary because it releases that for me. Otherwise, I my body will just completely be colonized with it. And how valuable do you think it is for your marriage that for each of you, like you're not putting the full weight of all of your stressors or, you know, you're just, you're not putting all of that on Brian and Brian's not putting all of that on you. Like, I think sometimes we think, oh, well, my partner, like the person I'm married to, they have to share all my burdens with me. And I think that with therapy, like, yes, you should let your partner in and be vulnerable with them, but that you don't need them to carry you. Like you can have someone who is there just for you that isn't also your spouse. Totally. Which also speaks volumes to the Brian's character because there are some men that are threatened by that and they're like, no, I want you to tell me all your problems, you know, kind of thing. And right. I don't know if they say it like that, but, um, <laughs> I mean, um but I think that you know, Brian and my relationship has changed a lot. I think in the beginning I was dependent on him. And I think, you know, through his illness, he was dependent on me. And I think now we really live this life where we are two completely different people living two separate lives who choose to uh, share them with each other. And so like my job is 
to live my life the way I want to live my life and to support Brian living the life the way he wants to live his life. And his job is to live the life he wants to live and to support me living the life that I want to live. And that is uh, very different than being dependent on one another. Yeah, you guys foster each other's dreams and you don't need each other anymore. You want each other, which is yeah. so freeing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it takes support to make that happen. Like you you don't just wake up one morning. Work. Yeah, you don't just wake up and that's true. Yeah. Yeah, it takes a lot of work to get to that point, but it's such a it's such a healthier relationship to to feel fully free to like this is who I am and this is who I want to be and this is how I want to live. And this is what I want to do. And, you know, nobody's asking anyone permission or anything. It's just, Hey, this is, this is what I'm going to do. And it's like, yeah, I support you. Go do your thing. I think when we want to be wanted, we settle for being needed. But when you have two people who are doing their own work and can come together and want to be with each other instead of need to be with each other, it, that just, there's so much freedom and wholeness there. Mm -hmm. Um, but it doesn't come without, like you said, a lot of hard work and practical things like going to therapy. Right. Totally. Yeah. So good. That was a good episode. (laughs) Well, I'm glad we could talk about, um, therapy and give some insight into what it looks like for you, um, to go to therapy. And, um, I mean, it is a huge part in, in this book existing because you had the awareness um, and the processing capability to go through all of this really painful stuff that I don't know that you would be able to do without all the time that you've put into um, investing in yourself and learning about yourself um, with your therapist. Yeah, totally. Okay, guys, we're going to see you next week. See you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Zimmerman Podcast miniseries, Sleeping with a Stranger Under the Cover. Don't forget, you can get book updates and VIP treatment at sleepingwithastranger.com. The book will be available May 7th. I'll see you next time.